Let's have a look at this first example together. Forces of magnitude, 5 newtons, 7 newtons, and some unknown number of newtons, Q newtons, act on a particle that is in equilibrium. So let's just underline that, that's important. Without that, we can't really go much further, as shown in the diagram below. And then the question is, what's the magnitude of Q in newtons? And you can see we're not actually interested in the particular value, we just want to know can we reason through what's going on here. Now even before you go anywhere, right, just have a look at each of these th um, five potential solutions. I hope you recognize, even without knowing you know, this diagram, you could actually just look at these lines and you can recognize these are all flowing out of the cosine rule, right? You've got an a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. And the idea here is, is that there's going to be the formation of a triangle just like we did up above in here. You can see these three vectors here. Once I put them together, I form a triangle. And uh, in that triangle, what I want to do is find this unknown side, Q, and that'll give me the magnitude of that resultant force. Okay, so how am I going to do this? How do I create the appropriate triangle? Well, what I'm going to do is, let me just move this out of the way so that I can draw it a little more accurately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about doing these vectors one at a time and seeing what diagram gets created by that. So if for instance I say let's imagine doing this um, this five newtons first okay that's my first vector I go off in that direction and then the next one I'm going to do is this Q vector I'm just going to go clockwise okay. Um, what result will I get? Well you can see it's going to head up in the uh, northeasterly-ish direction. I'm just using that language so that it's, it's more accurate slightly than saying that corner of the page. Uh, it's going to go upwards like this and then um, you can see I've positioned myself so I'm sort of on this vertical because I know the third and final vector is going to be this seven newtons which is going downwards. So while I will measure this in or mark this in as Q newtons uh, I'm then going to finish it off with this which is seven newtons. Okay, now you can see at this point I'm going to use a, I'm going to pull a similar trick that I did in the, you know, my previous easy examples here, which is that because I've got this straight line here, this is one long vertical line, I can take advantage of the fact that these angles along here have to add up to 180 degrees. So that gives me 70 degrees on the inside here. And I'm pretty much done at this point, right? I'm trying to find Q, that's the unknown. So 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 cos of 70 degrees. So when I have a look at my answers here, you can see I can exclude B and C and E. They don't have the appropriate angle. Between A and D, which is the right one, well that relationship that I just mentioned before using the cosine rule, if I just write it up here, it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. I always like to think of it as Pythagoras' theorem on steroids. Um, this is just the adjustment factor for if your angle is not pi on 2. Um, but you can see this as stated, right, the cosine rule and Pythagoras' theorem, they don't give you the length of a side directly, they give you the square of that side. So you've got this C squared here. If what I want is not Q squared but Q, then I need to take the square root of both sides and that's going to give me option a. So that's how I reasoned through this. Hope that makes sense. Um, this is a very simple example. Let's now push on this a little further when you've got um, concurrent forces that uh, you know I'm going to need to resolve the horizontal and vertical components. So have a look at this one with me. This is from a Victorian paper. It says a flower pot of mass m kilograms, let's just underline that, is held in equilibrium by two light ropes. And uh, I don't know if you have seen this before, but when they talk about a light rope, all they mean is that the ropes don't have any weight that we need to worry about, any significant mass that's going to affect, um, you know, you know, you actually have to hold up your own mass. Uh, you know, you need to have some, a substance strong enough to do that. But we're just actually saying, don't worry about the rope. We're just going to think about the flower pot's mass which is m kilograms. Both of which are connected to a ceiling as you can see up here they're sort of strung up and here's our horizontal ceiling bar. The first rope makes an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical which you can see here and it's got a tension of T1 newtons. Okay so let's mark that in. I'm going to make this a bit thinner. So this is the first rope here. We know it's the first one because it's got that 30 degree um, angle and I'm going to call that T1 newtons going off in that direction. The second makes an angle of 60 degrees to the vertical and has a tension of um, T2 newtons. Okay, so let's have that one going off in that direction and we'll call this one T2. All right. 
Show that T2 equals T1 on root 3. All right, so let's think about this for a second. What we want to try and do here is show the relationship between these two ropes um, and show that there's um, this kind of uh, proportional relationship going on here. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, um, there's a bunch of different things that I need to sort of take into account here. But the thing that's most obvious is that because you've got this flower pot and it's got its mass of um, m kilograms, right? It's pulling downwards. It's in equilibrium, so we know it's not pulling so hard that it's, you know, um, exceeded the tension of the ropes that's holding it up. Um, but I know that there's going to be sort of upward forces from the ropes that are offset against the uh, mass of the flower pot. Now, while that's um, true, you can see in part A, this equation here has nothing to do with the mass of the flower pot. It's independent of M. So therefore, in order to show that this is true, the up-down of this situation is not going to be relevant because if I'm thinking about it vertically, I have to bring in the mass of the flower pot. What I'm going to do instead is think about it horizontally. Um, you can see it's not as though um, the one of these ropes is pulling successfully more than the other one uh, because, like I said, it's in equilibrium. So therefore, the horizontal components or the horizontal forces that are resulting from each of these two ropes, they also have to be in balance. So there's a lot to take in there. Let me see if I can put some things onto the diagram that's gonna help us make sense of it. This T1 here, which is heading off um, at 30 degrees to the vertical, right? I'm going to break it up. I'm gonna resolve its forces into two components. There's this vertical component, like so, and then this horizontal one, like so. And the same thing happens for uh, the second rope, which has a tension of T2. So it's got a vertical. Just going to put this on the side just so you can see them separately. And then it's also got a horizontal like so. Now the whole idea here is, you can see because it's in equilibrium, these two different forces, even though um, the diagram doesn't look like it, they have to be equal to each other because otherwise um, this thing would be swinging one way or the other. So therefore I just need to find an expression for this and an expression for this, um, show that they're equal and I should be able to get this relationship out here. So to sort of, you know, put some helpful names on things, I'm going to call this, let's start with the first rope. I'm going to call this X1 and Y1, X being horizontal, Y being vertical. And just while I'm at it, I'll do the same for the other two. So I'll have this as X2 and I'll call the other one Y2. All right. Now, if you have a think about this diagram here, for example, if I extend this vertical downwards, you've got this right angle triangle happening. And of course, the right angle triangle is there because I'm putting in horizontals and verticals. Now, if I have a look at the relationship between um, this horizontal line and this hypotenuse here with the angle, that 30 degrees is up in the top corner. So this is opposite on hypotenuse. So it's sign that relates these, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this is part A. I'll put this in red since I'm thinking about this uh, red triangle up here. I can say sine 30 equals opposite, which is x1, on hypotenuse, which is t1. So now I have an expression for x1. It's going to be t1 times sine 30. But of course, sine 30 is a half, so it just gives me t1 on 2. Uh, I can do, I can make the same kind of, I can pull the same kind of trick over here on the other triangle. Um, you can see over here, or the other rope I should say, um, I can create a triangle here in much the same way by going and dropping this vertical all the way there. I've got this right angle. And so um, X2, maybe if I move this over just to make it a bit more obvious that it's this um, link down here, in the same way it's going to be opposite on hypotenuse, it's just that it's a different angle, it's 60 degrees, right? So therefore I'm going to say sine of 60 degrees equals opposite on hypotenuse, which is X2 on T2 in this case. Um, making X to the subject, I'll multiply T2 to the other side, and I can also evaluate sine 60 degrees, which is root three on two. So that gives me root three on two, T2. Okay, at this point here, um, I know that these two things are in balance. So I'm going to say since flower pot is in equilibrium, I think this sort of verbal reasoning is really, really important not to skip over. Since it is in equilibrium, I can equate these horizontal forces because they're opposing to each other. I can say x1 equals x2. In fact, looking at the way they've stated the question in, in part A, I'm going to go one better and I'm going to say x2 equals x1 um, because I do want t2 as the subject. So it's going to be root 3 on 2 
T2 equals uh, T1 on 2. So I hope that you can see um, this is where I got that, um, that result from over there and I'm doing the same thing the T1 on two because I got it from over here. Um, and there's really just one line of working required to get to, it's not even a line of working, I'm just gonna write down the given result. I'm multiplying both sides by two, which cancels our two denominators down here, and then I'm dividing by root three. So that gives me, as required, T2 equals T1 on root three. And that's part A.